On this, our first episode of Public Scrutiny, we'll be adding Ricky Gervais's opening monologue from the 2020 Golden Globes to our record. At this point, quite a few events have occurred which have led me to believe that the big balance has shifted in our favour. This monologue was one of them. I was expecting it to run pretty much as per the other monologues, with Gervais taking shots at individuals and movies that had not performed well at the box office. Obviously, this time around, Gervais had decided to widen the field of his jokes to pretty much encompass all of them, as well as individuals and movies that hadn't done well. It was an event in and of itself, but it's the relevance of the content of his jokes and the position he put himself in which gets him a place on this channel. You'll, you'll be pleased to know this is the last time I'm hosting these awards, so I don't care anymore. Um, I'm joking. I never did. Um, NBC clearly don't care either. Fifth time. So, I mean, Kevin Hart was fired from the Oscars because of some offensive tweets. Hello. <laughs> Lucky for me, the Hollywood foreign press can barely speak English, and they've no idea what Twitter is, so I got offered this gig by fax. So let's go out with a bang. Let's have a laugh at your expense, shall we? Remember, they're just jokes. We're all going to die soon, and there's no sequel. So. Yeah, remember that. Um, but you all look lovely, all doled up. You came here in your limos. I came here in a limo tonight, and the license plate was made by Felicity Huffman. So, no. For those that don't know, Felicity Huffman is or was in Desperate Housewives, and she was one of 30 parents who engaged in conspiracy to commit fraud by cheating the SATs in order to boost their kids' scores. They jailed her for it, hence Gervais saying that she made his license plate. Shush. It's her, it's her daughter I feel sorry for, OK? That must be the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to her. And her dad was in Wild Hogs. So, lots of big celebrities here tonight. I mean, legends, icons, yeah? Look, at this table alone, uh, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro. But... Baby Yoda. Uh, oh, that's, that's Joe Pesci, sorry. Um, I love you, man. Don't have me whacked. Um, but tonight isn't just about the people in front of the camera. In this room are some of the most important TV and film executives in the world. People from every background, but they all have one thing in common. They're all terrified of Ronan Farrow. <laughs> He's coming for you. He's coming for you. So Ronan Farrow is the journalist that helped bring to light allegations of sexual abuse against Harvey Weinstein. And now he's coming for the Hollywood people. Interesting fact, Ronan Farrow's father is Woody Allen, but I digress. Look, talking of all you perverts, it was a big year... It was a big year for paedophile movies. Um, surviving R. Kelly, Leaving Neverland, Two popes. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I don't After joking about all you perverts, he then segues into paedophile movies. Remember, folks, these are just jokes. It's just humour. You'd have to be mental to take any of it seriously, which is why everybody laughed when he added the Catholic Church to the list. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Many talented people of colour were snubbed in major categories. Um, Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. The Hollywood foreign press are all very, very racist. So, fifth time. So, we were going to do an in memoriam this year, but when I saw the list of people that had died, it wasn't diverse enough. It just, no. It was mostly white people. And I thought, nah, not on my watch. So. In my opinion, the cleverest joke of the night. The people in there will never experience the hardship of those who suffer the politics they peddle. It's everyone else that suffers. One way they could be affected, though, is through their own vanity. 
they probably are self-absorbed enough to care about what people will say about them after they die, and that's where they just got hit. But let's have a quick look at the audience diversity levels. It's not exactly Peckham in there, is it? Maybe next year. Let's, let's see what happens. No one cares about movies anymore. No one goes to the cinema. No one really watches network TV. Everyone's watching Netflix. This show should just be me coming out going, well done, Netflix, you win everything. Good night. But no, no, we've got to drag it out for three hours. You could binge watch the entire first season of Afterlife instead of watching this show. That, that's a show about a man who wants to kill himself because his wife dies of cancer. And it's still more fun than this, OK? <laughs> Spoiler alert, um, season two is on the way. So in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. Shut up! This, for me, is when the bomb went off. This joke relates to a man who was convicted for sex trafficking, Jeffrey Epstein. He owned an island. People would go to that island, very wealthy and famous people. Epstein had a plane that took them there. The whole place was covered in cameras. Anyway, eventually things caught up with Epstein and he ended up in jail and it was while he was in jail, on suicide watch, that they say he committed suicide. It's a shame that none of the prison cameras were working, but you can bet that the cameras on Jeffrey Epstein's island were working, and there's more than a few in that room who've been to Epstein's island, and very possibly one or two that may have grown up there. I know he's your friend, but I don't care. <laughs> you had to make your own way here in your own plane, didn't you? A lot of people miss this reference, but it's about Epstein having a plane that took people to and from his island. It was called the Lolita Express. So when he says, I bet you had to come here in your own planes tonight, didn't you? He means as opposed to taking the Lolita Express to and from Epstein's island. The Epstein story is very far from over, and it's on a scale almost unimaginable. It will be covered by this channel as things unfold. Right. But, m seriously, most films are awful, lazy, remakes, sequels. I've heard a rumour that there might be a sequel to Sophie's Choice. I mean, that would just be Meryl Streep going, well, it's got to be this one, then. <laughs> All the best actors have jumped to Netflix and HBO, you know. And the actors who just do Hollywood movies now do fantasy adventure nonsense. They wear masks and capes and really tight costumes. Their job isn't acting anymore. It's going to the gym twice a day and taking steroids, really. Have we got, a, have we got an award for most ripped junkie? No. No point. We know he'd win that. Um, Martin Scorsese, the greatest living director, made the news for his controversial comments about the Marvel franchise. He said they're not real cinema and uh, they remind him of theme parks. I agree. Although I don't know what he's doing hanging around theme parks. He's not big enough to go on the rides, is he? <laughs> it's tiny. Anyone else wonder where Gervais was going with this joke? Scorsese looks a bit relieved that he was only joking about his height. <laughs> right. The Irishman was amazing. It was amazing. Um, that, it was. My fact, my, it was great. Uh, long, but amazing. Um, it wasn't the only epic movie. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, nearly three hours long, Leonardo DiCaprio attended the premiere, and by the end, his date was too old for him. So, <laughs> So, after joking about perverts, paedophiles and sex traffickers, Gervais is now joking that DiCaprio's date was so young that she became too old for him over the course of a three-hour film. Even Prince Andrew's like, come on, Leo, mate, you know. <laughs> you're nearly 50, son. Followed, of course, by an obligatory mention of Prince Andrew. Um... The world got to see James Corden as a fat pussy. <laughs> he was also in the movie Cats, but no one saw that. Um, and the reviews, oh, shocking. I saw one that said, this is the worst thing to happen to cats since dogs, right? 
But Dame Judi Dench defended the film, saying it was the role she was born to play, because she... I can't do this next joke. <laughs> because she loves nothing better than plonking herself down on the carpet, lifting her leg and licking her... Furball, furball. She's old school. Um, <laughs> it's the last time, who cares? <laughs> oh. Apple roared into the, the TV game with a morning show. A superb drama, yeah. <laughs> a superb drama about the importance of dignity and doing the right thing, made by a company that runs sweatshops in China. So True enough, the factory in China installed suicide nets. It may be hard for us to consider how bad things would have to be at work that people would kill themselves because of it, and that corporations who peddle the woke message often are just as guilty as those they claim to oppose. Either way, the public image they maintain is nothing more than a confection, and usually it bears no relation to the truth. Well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney. If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent, wouldn't you? So, if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right? Come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your God, and... So... It's already three hours long. Right, let's do the first award. The first award... The first award is for best actor in a television series, musical or comedy. To present the award are a couple of actors off the telly, what can I say? <laughs> Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. All told, this monologue was, in my opinion, fantastic. I doubt anyone else in the world would have been able to shine such a bright light right at some of the biggest hypocrites currently walking the earth today. And Gervais committed himself to it 100%. There's no coming back from it. For me, three things linked together. Epstein, Andrew and the plane. Those three things tell me that Gervais probably knows quite a bit about it and given where that path leads, it's monumental that he would stand up in that way to those people. I'm also fairly sure that there will be a few in that room who are going to be quite concerned at what Gervais could say next year. Time will tell, I suppose. And with that, I'll end this video here. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a like as it really helps and if you want to see more, you can subscribe.